Hi everyone, it's Don once again with another construction update video for you. This is video number 125. I'm standing out here at the intersection of what will soon be Marsh Bend Trail or County Road 501 and 470. In front of me is a traffic circle. This is what it looks like. Behind me is the old County Road 470. It's going to be shut down on April 23rd. We'll take a look at this intersection and the rerouting of County Road 470 in just a few minutes. Other things in plan for this? I've got another TAN video. TAN is then and now. This time it's going to be the village of Deluna. I've also taken a look at a lot of the other stuff going on down here in the southern end of the villages. I hope you enjoy it, so let's get started. The intersection of 470 and County Route 501, or Marsh Bend Trail, is being reworked next week starting on the 23rd. Because of this work, traffic will be rerouted along Central Parkway going through the Middleton area. Coming from the east on 470, you'll take Bexley Trail up until it reaches Central Parkway. This is the same Bexley Trail that will eventually cross the Southern Oaks Bridge. As you travel down Central Parkway, Eastport will be on your right. This is all under construction. This will give us a pretty good look at what's happening with Eastport as it continues to grow over the next year or two. This building will be the Village's Healthcare Eastport facility. This first section of Central Parkway is the first part of the County Road 470 upgrade that will turn it from two lanes to four lanes, going all the way from the Village of Dabney out to the cement plant at the top of the screen. A lot of landscaping and finishing work has been going on along Central Parkway and continues to this day. I'm on the south side of Central Parkway now, and as I rotate to the left, this is Marsh Bend Trail or County Road 501 and the new segment of road that's being built to make this new intersection. This is the Gibson Electrical Substation and Gibson Wastewater Treatment Facility that's being built. The area to the left of Central Parkway will be age-restricted residential property, and the property just to the west of the Wastewater Treatment Facility is also residential, but it's unclear in any of the documents I've seen whether it's age-restricted or family residential property. Because there's very few landmarks to get your bearings with in this new construction area, I've included a mini-map in the lower left corner of the screen that shows our track and the heading of the aircraft as we go through this area. The high school is coming into view in the upper left corner. I'll show you more of this and the rest of Middleton in just a couple of minutes. Let's head on up to Richmond, where the Buena Vista Extension meets Megason. This area has been under construction for a while now. What you'll see is two units, 142 and 115. 142 appears to be courtyard villas, 115 appears to be designer homes or possibly veranda homes. This area appears to be a pretty big puzzle. No idea why they haven't started building here, why they've stopped, or what the plans are or even what the timeline might be. It just has come to a complete standstill. I'm sure the Villages has a plan, and there's a good reason for doing it. We'll see in due time. We'll keep a close eye on this location. As fast as Richmond sold, I'm sure this will be in high demand when it ever starts to be built.
Let's face it, we're not as young as we once were. Climbing those old-fashioned attic stairs to get the Christmas decorations down or to stow those family treasures is just too dangerous. Magic Stairs is the safer alternative. Real steps with safety rails at a safer angle and safety rails in the attic provide the safest attic access available. Having troubles getting things to and from the attic? The Magic Attic Lift can be there to help. Designed by Village's resident Ron Burner, every Magic Stairs and Magic Attic Lift is custom built in their Ocala, Florida factory and installed by their technicians. Why take chances? For less than the cost, cost of one emergency room visit, you can have Magic Stairs installed in your home. Magic Stairs, the safer, more convenient alternative. This is Then and Now. We'll take a look at the village of Deluna then, about a year ago, and now, and see how much things have changed in just one year. We'll start out at the southeast corner of the village of Deluna. We'll fly up along Marsh Bend Trail, up past the recreation area, the pool, the postal station, and turn around and come back and you'll get a great view of how things have changed in just one short year. Just based on all the positive comments and feedback I've gotten about these then and now segments, I have decided to start including them about once a month in my videos. I hope you like the new format. I took some feedback that I got about being able to see certain things, maybe seeing a map and the compass, and I threw them all together, and I think this works out well. You get to see everything, and you get a good view from a map to see where you're at to get your bearings. The village of Deluna is somewhat unique. It's one of two or three villages that exists in two CDDs, in this case CDD 12 and CDD 13. Marsh Bend Trail is the primary road running through the middle of the village of Deluna, and since its opening a few months ago, has become a major relief in getting from US 301 farther south. The blue roofed building at the top of the screen is the old motocross track. The owner has since sold it, and now they're building a new facility down in Bushnell. Another company has bought this property and will be developing it soon. According to the plans I've seen, it's going to be mainly residential. And no, contrary to rumor, it was not purchased by the villages or any of its many shell companies. There's a lot more water in these wetlands and retention ponds than there was a year ago, even though the water levels are low right now by normal standards. The shallow area in this pond is by design. The biomass that builds up on this littoral shelf is used as a filter for any potential contaminants that may be in the water before it drains into the other wetlands areas. The February 2022 video in the upper left screen was taken about 10 days after the first foundations were started in Deluna. In the lower right, as you can see a year later, everything is complete in Deluna. If you look carefully at the top of each of the video screens, you can see St. John's and Richmond and how much they've changed in the last year also. As I said at the beginning of this segment, I intend to make these tan videos, the then and now videos that is, a regular part of what I produce each month. Let me know what you think. I'd like your feedback. Tell me if you like the format. If you don't, I'll try something different if it's overwhelmingly against what I'm doing right now. Let's move just a little bit to the north to the Okahumka Recreation Center and take a look at that. Sitting right on Lake Okahumka, this is a gorgeous facility inside and out. There's a lot more coming. Harry and the Natives is supposed to be built in this location. One of the problems here though is Lake Okahumka itself. It's a very shallow lake and it has a lot of aquatic growth in it. Makes it very difficult to do any kind of boating. There's some open channels where boats have continuously cut through, but for the most part, it's not a great boating lake. One of my friends who I golf with every Saturday morning is very big into kayaking. He's kayaked this lake and taken a look at it and he gives it two thumbs down. It's just too cluttered. There's too much growth. It's very difficult to get through. It's very slow getting through because of the growth. Uh, I know the rec department is pushing it for kayaking. We'll see how that works out. But his opinion is it's not going to be a good experience. You can see that the aquatic growth is already growing back in to the lagoon that they've dug out after they've removed the boom. 
Let's go take a quick look at Dunkin' Donuts that just opened up about two weeks ago at the corner of Warm Springs Avenue and US 301. It's located on the north side of Warm Springs Avenue and it's not golf cart accessible. But you'll never guess what I saw as I was pulling in. There was a golf cart crossing Warm Springs Avenue coming back from Dunkin' Donuts. This is neither safe nor legal. It wouldn't make sense if you turned on something in one room and it turned on everywhere else. Well, that's exactly how traditional cooling and heating systems work. So you pay to where Eastport is being built, and take a look at the progress there. This is the route I'll be flying around Eastport. As we fly over the island, where the amphitheater-style seating will be to watch the dragon boat racing, we can see that they are lining this pond now to keep the water in it. This is the location where the waterfront hotel will be built. Here you can see the outline for the parking lots for the Village's Health Eastport facility. Eastport is going to be another downtown area, similar to Brownwood and Lake Sumter Landing and Spanish Springs, but we're not going to call it a square because there really is no traditional town square in the middle. It's more of a waterfront community. This road here is Bar Boulevard. It goes all the way to the high school. In this location, there's going to be a bank, and right next to it is a golf cart store. The pond going in at this corner is marked on the drawings as being for RC boat racing. The road on the left side of the screen is Central Parkway. This will be the section that's being opened up on the 23rd of April. From this pond until we round the next corner is all designated for recreation area, ball fields, and the Olympia Recreation Center. The road in front of us is actually Bexley Trail, and that comes all the way from Sawgrass Grove. The grassy area here as we round the corner is the Farragut softball fields. Coming into view on the right side of the screen is the north end of the one kilometer lake that's being built for dragon boat racing. We'll round the corner. You'll see that they're putting in the rubber liner in this whole thing. It's going to be huge. And they're doing the backfill to cover the liner. We'll continue to round the corner and we'll get a nice view of what's going to be the waterfront and the island area. This was originally supposed to be the first part of a then and now video. But unfortunately, coming up is where I screwed up. I thought I was going down the main street. I thought I was going down Bar Avenue. But instead, I went down to the right. So I'm going to refly this again. But this was still a pretty good video. I liked the way it came out. Stay tuned for the next one. It will be the real then and now video that will be the then in about a year. Until then, it's the now, at least for now. Next up on the agenda is Middleton, and we're going to take a quick look at all the work going on down there. This is such a huge area, there's so much going on, it's unbelievable. We'll start out heading south, just south of the high school complex. This whole area is going to be family residential area eventually. They're moving ahead with permitting. We'll rotate around and we'll head back towards the north a little bit and we'll fly down this nice long retention pond. This is gorgeous. They really did a nice job laying it out, especially when we come up to this bridge. The speedometer in the upper right says we're moving about 25 miles an hour, but this is four times normal, so we're actually moving at about 100 miles an hour right now during this flight, and I'll keep this speed up through the entire flight. That's the K-8 through school on the left. This is the Early Learning Center ahead of us. All these new schools are scheduled to open up in August, so they've got a whole lot of work ahead of them. We'll rotate around the Early Learning Center, and we'll see part of the downtown district and the new commercial buildings that are being built. There are several under construction, many more to come. The sheer number of projects that are going on in this area right now is pretty mind-boggling. The amount of coordination it takes is phenomenal. We're going to round the corner again. This is Bar Boulevard, or Bar Avenue, whichever it is. This is the one that comes from Eastport. 
There's the high school. We're coming up on the football field. You can see it looks absolutely gorgeous. This is the artificial turf. You can see the track. Lots going on. Softball field. Baseball field in the foreground. Rotate around. So much happening here. We can see the backside of the high school, the soccer fields that are being built. We'll rotate around. We're going to fly over this residential area. Again, this is all family residential on this side of Middleton. And this is one of the new parks that's being built here in Middleton. It's got a pool. This is for the families. This isn't for the age-restricted part of the community. Middleton has its own amenities. It doesn't use the ones from the villages. Lots are already being sold in this section of Middleton. There are two buildings coming up in this shot. The near one is a maintenance facility and laydown yard, and the one farther back is the home warranty department for the villages. When you call for a warranty call, this is where it goes. This is the dog park for Middleton. It's designed pretty much like the rest of them throughout the villages. And this is one of their parks. And this is where the, one of the postal station is for this section of Middleton, along with the swimming pool. This flight is another workup for a then and now video. This will be the then video in about six to nine months. As you can tell, it's nice and smooth. The turns are easy because this is all pre-programmed. It's an automated flight. I use some special software for it. It gets rid of the twitchiness out of my hands. This wasn't the first flight doing it though, it actually took four tries to get it right. Once again, we're over some more residential areas, and I'm going to make a nice smooth run towards the front of the school, and then go up and over. Middleton held an open house this weekend. They had five model homes open for viewing, drew quite a crowd. There was both over 55 and lots of young families looking at the houses. Here's a few pictures of the houses. Homes are selling well here. They're not selling in the same numbers as they sell in the villages section of the community, but it's a completely different market. Also, the prices are quite a bit lower. I looked at some of the prices. They seem to be about 20% lower than what they are in the over 55 section of the community. Most of the backyards in Middleton are bigger than they are in the villages, but they do have some of the same floor plans, so it's real easy to make an apples to apples comparison on pricing. Looking for that perfect Murphy bed for your bonus room? Look no further. We offer three things. Best quality, best service, best warranty in the industry, bar none. Give us a call, set up an appointment, 612-598-3303, murphyoffice.com. Let's head on up now to the village of Wellpoint. This is the area just south of the village of Monarch Grove. The pace here in Wellpoint has really started to pick up. They're laying in the underground utilities for all the residential properties, as well as all the mains that will be going down McNeil Road. To the north is the village of Monarch Grove, and beyond it, the village of Linden. We'll rotate around now and head east towards the Florida Turnpike. If you've bought a lot and you're building a house and you need somebody to take pictures and watch the construction for you and report to you what's going on, please feel free to give me a call. For the month of April, I'm offering a 15% discount for any new home in Middleton and a 10% discount for any new home in Lake Denham. And if you have a Villages Realtor you're working with and they refer you to it, you'll get an even bigger discount. You can find all the information you need at goldwingnut.com. If you look carefully in the area where you see a couple of vehicles parked, you can see the outline for the parking lot for a new recreation center that's going to be built in this area. We'll rotate around to our left, and this is where a pitch and putt golf course is going, and when we rotate to our right, this will be the location of one of many executive golf courses that are going in in this area. They've only announced this one, but there are several more coming in, as well as two more championship golf courses in this area. As we continue on along McNeil Drive and head towards the Southern Oaks Bridge, you can see the roadbed is being worked for McNeil Drive. 
along the left side of this retention pond coming up, you can see where they've started sculpting the tee boxes for one of the holes. And you can also see the layout of the fairway as we move a little farther south. Coming up is the Southern Oaks Bridge. We'll rotate around to the left and take a quick look at it. Again, it's nearly finished. And we'll rotate around and we'll look towards Eastport. Eastport is way off in the distance, about a mile or so. Let's head on over to Sawgrass Grove and see what's happening there. They've started work on repairing the grass that's been torn up by certain individuals. Some of the arguments were pretty lame. They said not enough parking. The problem was, the parking was happening all the time, not when there was a big event. If it had just been when there was a big event, this wouldn't be a problem because it would be a rare occasion people parked on the grass. Some say it was a poor design. Actually, it's a brilliant design because they're able to use the parking from the pickleball courts and the putt and play course when it's not in use during the evening hours. This made more effective use of the space. Some claim that there's not enough handicap parking at Sawgrass Grove. There are eight handicap parking spots immediately adjacent to the entry to Sawgrass Grove, just as there are eight handicap parking spots in the Brownwood Town Square. While the entertainment areas in Brownwood and Sawgrass Grove are approximately the same size, over half of the area in Sawgrass Grove is occupied by tables and chairs, whereas in Brownwood most of the time it's just a big open dance floor. Some said no law was broken. Actually it was. Florida Statute 806.13, Arson and Criminal Mischief. The destruction of this public property by parking on it and damaging it is considered vandalism. Many people said just pave it. Unfortunately, it's too narrow of a spot for safe ingress and egress of golf carts and pedestrians. Others have made comments about the price. Well, this is about a half an acre. If you've bought any landscaping work here in the villages, you know that it's quite expensive. Half an acre is about three full lots of typical homes here in the villages or the landscaping for about 10 to 12 lots. District staff was already well aware of this before I even brought it up a couple of months ago, and they had already started the process of redoing the landscape and getting competitive bids to do the work. This comes down to simply a few selfish and self-entitled individuals who feel the rules don't apply to them, and they can park wherever they want and destroy public property. It's sad that things have come to this here in the villages. People of our age, you would think, knew better. And then, of course, we had this yesterday. Somebody decided that they just still needed to park there. I'm generally not one for public shaming or humiliation, but in this guy's case, I have no problem with it whatsoever. Hi, I'm Jeff Monash with Village Air Filters. Are you tired of wasting money on throwaway paper air filters? I can save you money with my lifetime permanent washable air filters. Just buy it once and never buy another air filter again. Rinse it out and then just slide it right back in. My filters are custom made in the U.S. and they have a lifetime warranty. Give me a call at 352-388-1230 or visit my website at villageairfilters.com. Let's move just a little bit to the south, to the Southern Oaks Bridge, and see how the work is going on it. The bridge itself is basically done. They're doing some landscaping, and they were putting in irrigation when I was out shooting this. They're not going to open it for quite a while, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some gates come up to block people from trying to get across, because it's going to happen. We've seen it time and again. If you like my videos, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notifications. And if you don't like it, hit the thumbs down button twice to let me know you really dislike it. I'll gain some altitude now so we can get a look at what's going on on the other side. As you can see, the traffic circle is being built. There's curbs up already, and they've got the multimodal tunnels that go under the roadbed. So they're making tremendous progress. This will go all the way down to Central Parkway and beyond. Next up, we'll do a quick flyover of the village of Lake Denham, and we'll take a quick look at the Franklin Recreation Center. This is looking north at the village of Newell as we turn around. Also shown is the Franklin Recreation Center, and as we rotate around, we see the Mickey Lee and Jubilee golf courses. We'll head south, and you can see that there's quite a bit of work going on now in Lake Denham. This is the hot spot for growing, and the village of Newell is reaching completion. Megason Road is still not open going down to County Road 470. 
Like many of you, I'm anxious for it to be open. It'll be a great shortcut, especially when I have to go down to the Middleton area. They've left plenty of green space and wetlands here. And just like the rest of the area down here, there's plenty of walking trails and biking paths along the edges of most of these properties. The first couple of homes are going in in this part of Lake Denham, and I'm sure by the next time I shoot it, there'll be about ten times as many houses here as there are now. This is the Franklin Recreation Center and the surrounding amenities that accompany it. You can see the pool is already filled. I have it on good authority. Actually, it was somebody who is intimately familiar with the schedule at a public meeting said that this recreation center would be opening next month. I'm pretty sure Mr. Rohan is a good source to believe on that topic. But like everything, this is obviously subject to change based on changing conditions. As always, it'll be interesting to see how the interior of this new rec center is decorated, what kind of theme they're going to give it. I'm thinking it's going to have some sort of agricultural theme, probably focused around watermelon, which was widely grown in the area that makes up most of the villages now. Let's head up to Magnolia Plaza and take a look at the 7-Eleven that's being built. They've got the sign up for the new 7-Eleven now. I got a lot of heated comments from my last video when I said Wawa was just another gas station and I didn't get it. Well, I've worked in a convenience store gas station when I was in high school. And trust me, last place I want to work. What makes 7-Eleven so different? It's going to be the first golf cart accessible gas station south of the Turnpike. That's what makes this one special as compared to just another convenience store. Which it really, that's all it is too, it's just another convenience store and gas station. Here's a few peeks in the window of what's happening inside the store. We still don't know the exact opening date, but they did fill the gas storage tanks this week. So it's probably getting pretty close. Hello everybody, my name is Joey Faulkner, owner and operator of 24 Hour Cart Club here in the Villages, a towing service provided strictly for golf carts, whether it be flat tire, run out of fuel, uh, any kind of emergency breakdown, uh, feel free to call us. You can sign up online at 24hourcartclub.com. You can sign up over the phone, area code 352-661-0562. Use promotion code WINGNUT and that'll give you three months free on a year membership. I did a quick fly around of the first couple of holes of the front and back nine of the Shallow Creek Golf Course. As you can see, they've got sawed down around the traps, just what we need, more traps. And it looks like they'll be springing the fairways pretty soon. Lots of water on this course, and it looks like lots of sand traps. I'll do a more thorough fly around of all 18 holes when the area becomes a little more accessible. Right now, I gotta watch where I'm going because a lot of the roads are still closed for construction. So I can't see the drone very well from where I'm standing at the Country Club location. They're starting to lay out the streets for some of the neighborhoods here. All these neighborhoods around this golf course will be part of the age-restricted or the over-55 community and not a part of Middleton. Coming up is one of the potable water wells and storage facilities for this area.
I'll do a slow 360 so you can get a good look at what's happening here in this area. All the plans and documents I've seen show a country club going in at this location. We'll go take a quick look at where they're going to be building a new fire station on Warm Springs Avenue in the coming year. There's not a lot to see here yet. It's directly across the street from the insurance agent, and right now it's just an empty lot. Let's go now to the far west side of the development where Coleman Ridge is being built. Coleman Ridge is just south of the city of Coleman and lies mainly along US 301. Coleman Ridge is another family residential area. It encompasses the northern part of this property. The southern part is the Marlino Tool Industrial Park. What divides the two sections will be the rerouting of US 301. The planning documents indicate that there's going to be approximately 100,000 square feet of commercial slash office space. So this would be stores and things like that. That will be on the north side of 301, just south of the residential properties. All the rest of this area as we head south is scheduled to be industrial. What exactly constitutes industrial is a very wide definition. So there's any number of things that could be going in here. We've got about another minute to go on this video. I want to thank you all for watching and remind you to please support my sponsors. Without their help, these videos wouldn't be possible. Also, please remember to hit the like button for the video if you really liked it. And subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notifications so you know when the next video is coming out. And if you dislike the video, again, hit the dislike button. But hit it twice just to let me know just how bad you really hated it. I want to wish you all health and happiness now and in the years to come. I'm Don Wiley, and thank you once again for watching. Thank you.